Hey there, people of the grid. It's a bit of a gray day today. Look outside, snow covering a little bit of the grass and the street, overcast, cloudy. Not the kind of day you want to go hang out outside. I've been in here working and I thought uh, I'm going to do a quick update because I've been doing some work on my iPad over here. I've got my Mac over here, which I still use. I actually use the iPad a lot more than the Mac. But one thing I noticed with the Mac, um, that I thought was a problem on my desk, and it's not. It's actually a problem in the Mac. Um, see, I've had it for about three and a half years now, and I thought this little covering I have on my desk is kind of not flat because the Mac doesn't sit flat, whereas my iPad keyboard does, and the iPad does, except for the camera bump. You know, it's it's perfect in every way. The Mac, though, it rocks, and I'm like, what is going on? Turns out, it appears that um, the Mac battery that's inside has swollen, causing, you know, a little a little bump in the middle. And I don't notice it unless I'm typing and the Mac rocks a bit, or when you go to close it, you'll actually see it. So check this out. All right, so there's the Mac. There's my iPad. And you can see this thing sits nice and flat doesn't move when you when you type whereas this guy this guy does not sit flat anymore and for the longest time I thought well it's this it's this pad that I've got I've got an invisible Got an invisible thing on my desk that is actually really nice. Um, I thought it was a bump in it, but it's not. In fact, it almost you almost feel like this, uh, and this is glass. This trackpad, it's actually protruding. It actually has a little lip there. It's protruding out of the case. On the edges here, it's not bad. It's it's actually flush. But here, it's actually protruding, whereas here, not as much. And here, so the edges seem to be okay, but that, uh, that trackpad is definitely protruding. So watch this. You can actually see, you know, it looks quite flat. But over here, you can see there's a, it's a bit of a edge to it. And then watch this. It doesn't even fully, and I don't want to force it because the screen is now touching the keyboard. It's not crazy. Look at that. Look at how far. Now the bottom of the case, it's aluminum, and so it can't really it can't blow it out this way much. And I've seen this before with other with other MacBooks I've had. This is the worst though that I've actually observed it getting to. This thing's only three and a half years old. I got this in May of 2018, and uh, it's still an awesome laptop. It still works extremely well. It's uh, quick. I mean, it's definitely fast. That's not an issue. But that is an issue because now if I, I'm afraid if I put it in my bag and actually squeeze it shut, it might it might damage the glass. And of course, three and a half years, we're out of Apple warranty, out of Apple care. Now for the iPad, take a look at this thing. So when I close it, nice and flat, nice and flat, if I take it out of the case, perfectly flat so there's no no issue with that and even on the back other than that little camera bump but even with that it it's just just a little bit off on the one end other than that it is perfectly flat and you can 
tell. I mean, even when you when you look at it, yeah, I mean, there is just there is no there is no bend to that. Apparently, these things, some dummies that have been doing tests by by actually forcing the bend on these, and they do. If you put them in a backpack or put weight on them, they will bend a bit, and then you'll crack your glass and you just broke your iPad. Don't want to do that. Um, I still can't get over how thin that is. Look at that. Like, here's the the pencil is actually thicker than the iPad itself. Isn't that crazy? This thing is amazing. So, yeah, I use this a ton. I use the I use the MacBook a bit, and I was actually looking around on the Apple site because if I was to get a new MacBook, I would get the 14 inch because they don't make the 13 inch anymore. 13 inch is the perfect size for a laptop because I hook it up to a remote monitor. If I'm in mobile mode and I want to use it somewhere else, I don't need something that's big. In fact, the 11 inch, the 11 inch iPad is, that's pretty much the perfect form factor. This keyboard I can type on incredibly quick. It's pretty much a full keyboard. I would consider a full keyboard. So very, very capable, very usable. Um, and since I've gotten the MacBook and I got the iPad later that year, I've pretty much transitioned my entire workflow to the iPad solely. I'd say 90 plus percent of the work that I do is on the iPad. And then there's 10%, 5% that I can only do on the Mac. It's really funny. There's some browser-based stuff because the browsers aren't identical between the two devices. Uh, there's some browser-based stuff that I have to come to the laptop to do. One of them is when you're interacting with certain websites. So um, lately, since I've started uploading videos again, pretty much every one that I upload gets copyright stricken by YouTube. So there's little bots that run analysis. They listen to all the music that you've got in the video and they'll claim it. And then the, the rightful owner of that music will get paid uh, for any advertising that Google runs against your video. And it's a pain in the butt because I actually use Storyblocks on the iPad inside of LumaFusion. So I'm actually paying for a subscription to Storyblocks. I can use all of their music, upload a video. As soon as it's up, boom, YouTube flags it as a copyright strike. So then you got to go through this process of saying, well, no, I've, I've licensed the music. I'm entitled to use it. You got to go through this process. I cannot, because of Google's tools on the iPad Pro, I cannot submit that that um, I guess that complaint or I can't file that inside the browser on the iPad I have to go to the Mac to file that really silly so that's one thing uh, it used to be that I had to do certain banking things on the MacBook because I couldn't download documents like copies of bills and things but that's all available now to me on the iPad and then the only other thing that I really need the Mac for is um, VPNing into work. So I used to be able to, uh, with my old employer VPN from in from the iPad Pro, but right now they don't have a VPN client available to us yet. So any of that type of work has to go through a PC or, or a Mac. Um, but yeah, my Mac is totally bent out of shape and that's only three and a half years. I've driven MacBooks for one I had for nine years, the original titanium Mac. That one uh, was awesome. This one's been awesome too, except for this little bend thing that's going on or battery swelling thing that's going on. I don't think it's expanding anymore. I've been keeping an eye on it for the last year. So I don't think I'm gonna get into a battery thermal runaway where it lights itself on fire on my desk, but uh, I'm kind of bummed out that it's no longer perfect. Like my iPad Pro, which is perfect. Huh. That's all I wanted to share with you today, just uh, share my little sadness over my um, swelling MacBook Pro battery. Um, like I said, I use the 13-inch MacBook Pro, I use the 11-inch iPad Pro. I think they're both great devices. Um, will I get another MacBook? Probably down the road because I want to get into back into some more software development and coding um, on, my, on the side. And uh, I just want a, you know, bigger, better, faster. The latest MacBooks are screaming fast. They're built using Apple's chip and it's no longer an Intel chip, which I think is the right move for Apple to do. 
Um, the iPad Pro that I have from 2018 is still performing extremely well, still screaming fast. Uh, no reason to upgrade there. The one thing that I would like to get that the newer ones have is a faster transfer on the Thunderbolt port. So if I hook up an external drive and I transfer large video files or large data sets, you can actually do that a lot quicker on the new iPad Pros. But, uh, you know, I live with the slow transfer speed. So I just start a transfer and, you know, it sits here at my desk and does its thing and whatever. I have a coffee. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm really happy that I'm using the same device for like three plus years. I've actually seen in 2019, they released a new version of the iPad Pro. And then again, was it in 2020 or 2021? I'm actually two revs behind the latest iPad Pro, um, but I'm still very happy with the one I've got, and I think I'll be able to push it for another two years and get a full five years out of it, and then it goes into the hand-me-down program where it goes down to our kids, and we just trickle down through them. So we actually uh, we run iPads in our family for a good nine, ten years anyways, for the most part. So been working well. All right, if you've uh, you've actually had this happen to your MacBook, let me know. I don't think I'm going to do anything to fix it. I don't want to take it in to pay for it unless it really starts buckling and, and popping out that trackpad. Then I have to do something, either get a new one or, or get a battery replacement. But for now, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to keep using it and deal with the rocky typing. That's all. Hope you're having a good day. Micro out.